In this video, you're gonna learn all about how to pick new songs to introduce to your church. There's millions of songs you could choose from, but I'm gonna share with you the three criteria you should be looking at when determining which songs to introduce to your church. Coming up. Hey everybody, Spencer here from leadingworshipwell.com, your daily dose of practical worship leading tips. If you want to find those tips, you can head over to Instagram or Facebook at leadingworshipwell where I'm posting worship leading tips every single day, or you can head over to the website leadingworshipwell.com and find them over there as well. But you're here on YouTube, so go ahead, hit the subscribe button, maybe hit the like button, and let's get into it because today we're talking all about new songs. And this is actually the first video in a series that we're going to be starting on this channel about introducing new songs in worship. At the end of the last series where we were talking about what to say while leading worship, the ultimate guide right here. There's tons of information on that. At the end of that, we did a Q&A. And one of the questions was all about introducing new songs. They said, what should you say before introducing a new song? And I gave a short little answer, but I think this idea of introducing new songs really needs a lot more time because introducing new songs is integral to what we do as worship leaders. We're constantly thinking, what song should we be singing on Sunday and which one should we be introducing to our church? So I wanted to do a whole series on this. And so I'm going to do for like the next four or five weeks, a bunch of videos about how to introduce new songs. But before we learn how to introduce them and what to say before we introduce them, we have to learn how to pick the best songs for our church. And that's why today I'm going to share with you these three criteria for picking new worship songs. And you can see there it says congregational worship songs, worship songs. And I want to start right there because there's a big difference between congregational worship songs and personal worship songs. And I think this is where so many worship leaders get it wrong. I know it's where I got it wrong, especially whenever I was first starting to lead worship. This idea of personal worship songs versus congregational worship songs. This is a difference that we need to understand before we head into the process of starting to pick out new songs for our church. Because when I first started out, my process and I know this happens for a lot of worship leaders, is to think, what worship song do I like? Okay, I'm going to do that for my church because I like that song, so probably everybody else will like it as well. I think that's where most worship leaders start. But the problem is you, you can pick congregational worship songs when you do that. Sometimes we like songs that work well as congregational songs, but the other thing that happens whenever you just view what do I want to introduce to the church is that you also end up picking personal worship songs. And personal worship songs are songs that you like. They're good whenever you're sitting by yourself or you hear them on the radio or maybe it's some obscure indie worship band that nobody else has ever heard of and you're like, this is the most amazing thing ever. And I'm not denying that those songs can move you personally into worship, but sometimes our tastes, especially as musicians, if you're on the worship team, if you are a worship leader, chances are you have a more developed sense of musical taste than the rest of your church because you're you're a music nerd right like you love complex rhythms you love amazing lyrics that have a bunch of meaning behind them a lot of metaphors that you have to wade through maybe that's what you love as a musician but those songs don't always work the best in a church environment because things are different whenever you compare personal worship you just sitting in a room listening to music and you can do whatever you want compared to congregational worship, where you have a certain amount of time to worship on a Sunday. Maybe that's how it works at your church. Maybe you don't have a time limit, but you've got a structure in your service where I'm going to do three or four songs or whatever, and then something else is going to happen, and then maybe you do a song at the end. And you've also got to think of the other people that you're leading. That's what congregational worship is, and personal worship songs don't always work for congregational worship songs. Now, that being said, that long intro, I want to talk about 
the criteria for congregational worship songs because this is going to let us know what we should be picking not just personal worship songs not just songs that we like not just songs that we want to introduce to our church but songs that were designed to be sung in church and i'm going to explain a little bit more what that means as we work our way through these three criteria so the first criteria of a congregational worship song number one it must be singable. People have to be able to sing it. Some songs are great, but they aren't singable. Not every song is made for the whole church to sing because, well, I'll share with you some specifics here in a second, but just not every song is made for the entire church to sing. And whenever you're picking out songs and you're considering the singability of it, you have to understand that the people you're leading are average singers. Most of the people, that's where the word average comes from, it means most, uh, they're, they're just average singers. They don't have an amazing range, they don't have musical experience, maybe some of them do, but probably most of them don't. And so too often whenever we pick songs out and try to determine whether they're singable or not, we view it through our worship leader musician lens. And we're musicians because that's what we do in the church, right? And so we've developed these skills over time, and sometimes we take them for granted. And one of those things is singability. Your range, even if you don't feel like you're the best singer in the world, is probably well beyond what the average person in your church can comfortably sing. So you've got to keep that in mind whenever it comes to singability. So here are a few areas to consider whenever you're determining whether a song is singable or not. And the first is range. Like I talked about before, the range of a song. Sometimes you can fix this just by, oh, I got super blurry there. Sometimes you can fix this just by adjusting the key of the song, right? I mean, I rarely do a song in the original key it was recorded in because the person who recorded it, they're an amazing singer. They're a professional singer. And so they have an amazing range and they can go up really high. But the people in your church can't do that. So sometimes you can just bring the song key down and it puts it in a range that people can comfortably sing in. But sometimes the range of the song, and maybe I'm not using the right word in that first part, but the range of the song is the bottom note to the top note. Sometimes that's too big and you can't fit it in the range of what a singable song should be for your congregation, which I've talked about this before. I'll do a whole video on it because I think it's really important, but how to put your songs in a singable key. And that is to keep it between a low B flat and a high E flat on the guitar. That is the first fret of the A string, the eighth fret of the G string. That's your range that you want to keep the melody in because that's the average range of someone in your congregation. Sometimes though, a song's range can't fit within that because somebody started out super low and jumped really high and no matter what you do, it won't fit in that range. So if a song's like that, there are ways that you can work around it because oftentimes that's something to do with an octave jump or something like that. But sometimes you just shouldn't do a song if the range is too big. The next thing is rhythm. If a song has a complicated rhythm, it's going to be really hard for the majority of your church to sing along with it. And I think of like the syncopated lines where the line comes in just a little bit after the beat in a part of a song. That's hard for people to sing along with. They want to come in on the downbeat. So if you've got a bunch of that over and over again, it might sound really cool musically, but it's not very singable for your church. So pay attention to rhythms as well. And then the other thing is just song structure. And this is really on a church by church basis, because I know that some churches, they'll just follow along with anything, but you've got to know your church because some churches, they just want like that set order, right? And that's not always a bad thing. So maybe just consider giving it to them, you know, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, bridge, chorus. If that's what people are used to, and you can push, there's room to push people outside of these criteria. So don't hear me wrong in that. You got to balance these, but these are what I'm looking for. And one of the things is song structure. So you want a song structure that's simple and it's not jumping all over the place and has a million different parts. At least I found that in my church. People like streamlined songs that they can follow along with easily. So the first criteria is that the song 
has to be singable and not what we consider singable as musicians, amateur or professional, however you consider yourself, you are above average in your musicianship. So not what we consider singable range wise, rhythmic wise, song structure wise, that's not what the average person in your church is able to do. So not what we consider singable, what is actually singable for the people in our church. On to number two, the second criteria is that the song must be full of truth. Are the worship songs that you sing full of truth or are they just a little fluffy? That's what you've got to determine because here's the truth. We don't get to introduce too many songs. So we want to make sure that the ones that we do introduce are filled with truth. And in next video, week's video, I'm going to share with you how often you should be introducing a new song. But I'll just give you the answer right now real quick, and then I'll spend a whole week uh, or a whole video talking about it next week. But how often should you be introducing a new song? Probably not more than once a month, depending on where you are in the life of your church. But that leaves you with 12 songs to introduce in an entire year. And so you have to pick really good songs and we want those songs to be filled with truth. So that means that we have to evaluate the lyrics. You actually have to look at the lyrics and not just know like, does the song sound good? Does it sound like something my church would sing? But actually looking at the lyrics because people remember what they sing. And oftentimes they're carrying those songs with them throughout the week. So we want them to be singing truth and believing truth and proclaiming truth so we need to look very carefully not just how the song sounds but at the lyrics and there's just a few ways that you can evaluate the lyrics the first is to sit down and actually read through the lyrics i find that there's something completely different that happens between playing through a song and listening through a song and just literally sitting down and reading the lyrics because whenever you read the lyrics you aren't deceived by a fancy melody or something that sounds amazing. You are literally reading the lyrics and thinking to yourself, is this true? And then as you go through that process, sometimes it's helpful to get someone else's opinion. In fact, I'd recommend getting someone else's opinion. This can be your pastor. This can be somebody else on your worship team. Just sit down and talk about the song with them. See, is this true? And is it not just is it true, but is it filled with truth? Because we only get to introduce 12 songs a year. So we want to make sure that they are jam-packed with truth and that our church is singing the best songs possible. And as you're going through that, I find that a helpful question to ask is, what truth is this song highlighting? And if it takes you like 30 minutes to figure out what truth a song is highlighting, you probably shouldn't be doing that song because it's not very clear. You can't come up with the answer very quickly. We want songs that smack you in the face with truth. We want it to be like, yes, like Jesus is the Savior, or we need to go out and share the gospel with people, or God is a God of promises. He always keeps his promises. Those songs, you know what the truth that you're highlighting them in them is so we want songs that we can easily answer the question what truth is this song highlighting and then the last sort of tip for evaluating the lyrics of a song is to not glance over questionable lyrics do you ever look at the lyrics of a song and you really like this the song you think this would be an amazing song for the church but there's just one line in it where you like i don't really know what that means or maybe I'm not sure if I actually agree with that. So there's two things that you want to do in that situation. You want to figure out what it means. That's what you want to do because that's going to tell you, number one, whether you agree with it, whether it's true or not. And if it's not true, you shouldn't do it. But the other part of that is that it, if you find out that you do agree with it and it is true, it gives you the language to explain it to your church because if it's a questionable line for you, it's gonna be a questionable line for your church and maybe you need to walk them through that line. So it's okay to do some songs with a little bit of a complex line, something like, I don't think we have to dumb down our worship songs, but you have to be able to lead people through those moments so that they actually understand what they're singing. And I wanna end here with just, uh, one trap that I find that people fall into whenever it comes to picking songs and whether they're true or not. And that is what I call these story songs. 
They're like songs that tell a story. I find them not very helpful in a congregational environment. Maybe for like a special element to a service, you can do a story song where it's like walking through someone's life and they're trying to figure out how God plays into that. I hope you know what songs I'm talking about. These are like the songs on the radio. I don't, I've seen churches do them. And I just think in church, we should be proclaiming truth. We're not like listening to somebody's made up story about somebody who went through something hard. We want to be proclaiming truth. So is the song full of truth? So stay away from story songs, in my opinion. The last thing is, this is the final criteria, is that we want the songs to be understandable. Are the songs that you're singing understandable? And this is, I've said this a million times now, I think on the YouTube channel, but clarity over art is what we want to focus on. We want the songs to be clear. If we have to choose between clarity and art, we're always choosing clarity over art. We want the truth that we're singing, which hopefully your song is full of truth, we want it to be clear. We want people to be able to understand it. And there is room for art in the church. I love art, but we can't let art trump clarity. And how does that happen? Well, sometimes the lyrics are super complex and they're all over the place and there's a million different ideas going on and maybe for personal worship, it's an amazing song because we can sit there and think about it for an hour, but we need to choose clarity over art. And then maybe there's a bunch of metaphors that are hard to understand and you're trying to figure them out and there's like 50 metaphors in the song. You're not really sure what they mean. It sounds cool artistically, but it's not very clear. We want to choose clarity over art because we want our songs to be understandable. And then when it comes to understandability, if that's a word, I also like to ask this question. Is it similar language that my church would use? Like, is what the artist wrote, whoever wrote the song, and I sit down and read the lyrics like we talked about in the last point, do I find that that's language that my church would actually say? Like, you know your church, you know what they speak like. Do you see your church saying these? Because if your church doesn't isn't going to say something, they probably aren't going to sing it either. Have you ever thought about that before? If there's and here's an example like i lead worship on the east coast in pennsylvania and sometimes these worship songs coming out of california on the west coast like that's a different culture from where i live just straight up that's a that's a different culture they use different language and sometimes i look at these worship songs and i'm like my church would never talk like that so it's not going to work in my church it might fit all of the other criteria and it might be understandable for somebody on the west coast but it's not understandable for people in my church. So you got to know your church as well and think, is this language that my church, the people in my church would actually speak if they were speaking about God? Think about that question as well, and that'll help you know whether it will be understandable for people or not. Those are the three criteria, but I want to take it a step further and ask the question. You should always be asking this question. Is this song right for my church? Is it right for your church? Because the truth is that a song can meet all of this criteria. It can be singable. It can be full of truth. It can be understandable. But it might still not be right for your church. Have you ever introduced a song that you thought this song is going to be amazing? It's got all of these criteria. Maybe you've been thinking about those criteria before. If you have, that's amazing. Keep leading worship well. But maybe you've introduced a song like that and it's still fallen flat. You've met all the criteria, but people still don't sing along. They don't grab onto it. Well, that's because you have to determine what context you're leading into. You have to get to know the people of your church. How do you determine if a song is right for your church? You have to get to know the people of your church. You have to know what's going on in their lives, what truths they need to respond to, how they talk, like we talked about before, like what language are they going to grab onto and accept as their own? Because that's what we're doing whenever we are introducing new songs to people. We are giving them words to sing. 
and people want to grab onto those words and make them their own. Even though somebody else wrote them, they become their own and they are singing them to God. So we need to get to know the people of our church and make sure that we're picking songs that are going to serve them. And the only way we can pick songs that are going to serve them are not just following the three criteria, but also knowing the people in our church. After that, sometimes you just got to try songs out. You got to experiment, and it's okay to experiment. I've talked about this before. There's a bunch of time. Like, we, we need to understand that leading worship is not a short term thing, it is a long term process. If you are committed to a church and you're leading worship, maybe you're not leading every week, but somebody at your church is leading worship every single week, you have all of those weeks in the entire year to work on introducing new songs. We've got to stop viewing worship as like a one-time deal and view it as a process that's happening where we are pastoring our church over a long period of time. So that affords you the ability to make mistakes. It's okay if you try a song out and it doesn't work. You just learned that maybe that type of song doesn't work for my church and you don't have to be prideful and hold on to it for the rest of the time you lead worship and do it every single Sunday after that to try to get your people to grab onto it. Sometimes sometimes songs just don't work in your church and that's okay. So try out songs, look for patterns for what works and what doesn't work. And then whenever you find what works, lean into it. Lean into that style of song that works maybe that's maybe your church loves hymns you know it's okay to just still do hymns if everybody in your church loves them you don't have to always move on to the next greatest thing uh look for i find sometimes like specific bands work really well like for my church my church loves passion songs passion band and anytime we do a passion song they just grab onto it and it instantly becomes their song. So I lean into that, and I do a lot of passion songs or similar songs. Also, like fast and slow songs, just tempo-wise. You know, if your church loves fast songs, do some of them. Like, give them what they want if they're responding to that. Obviously, you want to balance truth and all of that stuff, but lean into what works. Find out what makes your church your church, and lean into it and serve the people well. So consider that before you pick a song. Is this right for my church? Before you go, I want to share with you a free audio training that I put together. It's called Five Tips to Instantly Improve Your Worship Leading. In it, you'll discover five simple tips that will instantly improve your worship leading. These are tips that if you're simply aware of them and make the conscious effort to do them, they will instantly improve your worship leading. They're super simple. You just got to know them. So the link for that's down in the description, or you can head to leadingworshipwell.com and you'll find it over there. Thanks so much for joining me. Whoops, I hit the wrong button again. Thanks so much for joining me. Once again, my name is Spencer Cormany from Leading Worship Well. Make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on future worship leading videos. This was just the first video video in a series of videos about talking about introducing new songs to your church. So the next one will be out next week. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.